Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today we're going to solve the RPA challenge with Komunda. Uh, the first thing you might think is, wait a minute, RPA, Komunda, what are you talking about? Komunda uses BPMN. Well, that's true. We use BPMN to design your processes. However, we now support native RPA execution. And with this, I'm going to show you what that means and how it works. So a uh, real quick introduction to the RPA challenge before we dive into the actual code and implementation here. Uh, you can go to rpachallenge.com. You can try the challenges yourself. This is a very common benchmark to test automation suites. Uh, it's very common to solve it with RPA, of course. That's why it's called RPA challenge. But I've also seen it solved with JavaScript and Python and other code-based automation frameworks like Selenium or Playwright. There's lots of options. This is a great platform for testing your automation capabilities. And this particular challenge that we're going to solve is the one that's on the screen, the input forms challenge. That's what we're doing for this video. Uh, the instructions are on the left, but to give you a real brief overview of what happens, there's an Excel file that you'll download. This Excel file has uh, a headers, and then it has several rows of personal information that matches the first name, last name, company name, role and company, email address, phone number, the, the fields that you see on the screen here. And what you need to do is parse that Excel file. Then you need to take that data and enter it into the form once for every row in the Excel workbook and submit it every single time. Now there's a trick though. You'll notice that address is the first form uh, input field here. And you'll notice that it's sort of in a, in a horizontal layout. If I click through, now we have a vertical layout and company name is the first one. And if I click through again, now we have two columns and address is the first one. Every single time you hit submit, the form layout changes, and that adds an additional complexity to how you have to configure your automation script because you can't just assume that the first input field is first name and the second input field is last name and so on. You have to know which field is which particular uh, piece of data to enter it. Now, before I dive into the actual script, uh, I want to share some resources here. Of course, you can always go to our docs under using Komunda. You can find all of our RPA documentation here. And then we have a link out to the resources on how to write an RPA script, what methods we support, uh, what, the, uh, what the integrated libraries are, et cetera, et cetera. That's what this link is here. So when you want to get started with RPA, this is your best starting point. A little bit about how it works though, you'll notice that we have Robot Framework mentioned here. Robot Framework is an open source RPA framework. That is the one that Komunda chose to work with. It is, I believe, by far the most popular RPA framework, but please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. And this, it provides the, uh, it's called a DSL, the domain specific language for writing an RPA script. Uh, so it gives you keywords, sort of like a programming language that have meaning behind them. And then it provides uh, basically an application to execute that particular script on whatever system you need to execute it on. On top of Robot Framework, there is also this RPA framework that's been made available. And Komunda is also utilizing this to provide additional libraries to import into your RPA bot, as well as provide some Python bindings that allow us to connect it with ZB and uh, your overall running process. I don't wanna to get too deep into the weeds. This video is not here to teach you how to write an RPA script or what Robot Framework is. Please go to the documentation and dive in from there. But having said that, let's switch to Modeler and take a look at the script that I've already written. We will go through this section by section so that you have a familiarity with RPA. And then again, go back to the docs and really dive deeply into what's available there when you're building your own RPA scripts. This is the general layout that you'll find for a robot framework based RPA script. Uh, you'll see that these ones in blue with the asterisks around them, those are essentially comments. And uh, the first one we have here are settings. We have documentation. This is just what it says. Documentation describes what this script does. Then we import a series of libraries. These are those extensions that I was mentioning earlier. These provide capabilities to the RPA bot. They're not something that you have to script and write yourself. They're already available. In this case, we're pulling in our browser package, our browser.selenium package specifically. This allows the RPA script to open the browser and interact with websites. We are setting auto close to false. By default, it is true. What this means is that when the script is done, it will leave the browser window open. 
That is just for the convenience of the recording of this video. Of course, if you do not need the browser window open at the end of the script, please change that to true. We also are importing our Excel library. This allows the RPA script to open an Excel workbook, parse the data in it, and then return that data as a variable to the RPA bot. We have our HTTP library. This allows us to actually download that Excel file from the RPA Challenge website. And we're just importing our Komunda namespace. This is required uh, for most RPA scripts that you're gonna integrate with Komunda in this fashion if you're using our RPA script connector because that is what kind of provides the magic of connecting your RPA bot to the running process. It's able to get the variables, work with secrets, that sort of stuff. So these are our imports for this particular one. Now we're gonna move on to our tasks. The way this RPA script works is we are defining the task, complete the challenge. You'll notice that this is very much in plain language. It doesn't feel like I'm reading a real programming language here. It feels like I'm reading instructions that somebody wrote down. And that's one of the great benefits of working with a robot framework and this type of RPA bot uh, is it's, it's very easy to work with. It's very easy to build the bots that you want because it feels sort of like you're just typing in plain natural language instead of typing in computer code. And so we're defining this task. This task is complete the challenge. And for this particular task, we have three steps that we need to complete. We need to start the challenge, we need to fill the forms, and we need to collect the results. And so where do we define these? Well, each of these within Ro uh, Robot Framework are called keywords. They're defined here naturally under keywords. So for start the challenge, the first step we're going to take, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna open the browser. We're gonna to navigate to rpachallenge.com. We are using Chrome for our browser. We're gonna maximize the browser window. This is a best practice when working with browser windows just to ensure that all of the data inside the website is available on the page at the time. Then we're gonna download that Excel file. We're gonna overwrite it if it already exists. Then we're gonna click the start button. And you'll notice here that we have this XPath slash slash, this, this, this looks really strange. This looks like programming. And in a way it is. So if we go back to the website real quick, if I switch back to my browser, what you'll see here is we have, um, oops, excuse me, back to the RPA challenge website. There we go. We have this start button here. And there's lots of ways to interact with an element on a website. You can use an ID, you can use a class name, you can search for text. There's lots of different ways to find it. What we've found, or, or what I should say, what works best for this particular challenge is to use this XPath. XPath is a standard way to navigate an XML or an HTML document. And of course, websites are HTML when they are delivered to the browser. And so this basically says, we're looking for a button that contains the text start. And wherever that button is on the page, it doesn't matter if it's in that left-hand column, it doesn't matter if it's on the right side, top or bottom, doesn't matter where it is or what color it is, this particular XPath search will find it and then we're able to click it to actually start the challenge itself. Uh, if you wanna learn more about XPath, again, go to the documentation. Not gonna be covering the specifics in this video. The next step after we start the challenge is we need to fill the forms. So to fill the forms, we need to populate this people variable. And to do that, we're going to get the list of people from an Excel file. Well, that's another keyword. You'll notice here that keywords can call keywords, very similar to how functions can call other functions in other programming languages. That's exactly what we're doing here. It's the exact same concept. So we're going to get the list of people from the Excel file. That's this keyword here. We're gonna open the workbook. This open workbook is provided by this Excel library import that we have here. Uh, I guess just to make it clear, open browser is provided from this browser import. If we didn't have these imports here, this script would not know what open browser means. So we're gonna open the workbook. We're gonna open the challenge workbook that we downloaded previously. Then we're gonna read the table and we have a header. Uh, the, the workbook has a header. It says first name, last name, role in company, company name, etc. And that formats the data in a very specific way, as we'll see in just a minute. Then we're going to close the workbook and we're going to return that data. So this variable here, table, is being returned to this people variable here. Now we know that this people variable is a, is a list of data that came out of that workbook. So we want to go one row at a time and insert that into the form. So for each person in the list of people, we're going to fill and submit the form and we're going to pass that particular person along to that keyword. 
So let's go to the fill and submit the form keyword. Here we are, we accept an argument of person. Uh, again, this person matches this value that's coming from here. And then you'll see again these XPath arguments over and over and over again. So remember at the beginning, when I clicked that submit button, the form changed its layout and the order of those fields changed. By using XPath, it doesn't matter where it is on the screen. It doesn't matter what order it's in. It doesn't matter if it's a horizontal layout or multiple columns. This X path is able to find it. It's able, it's looking for an input with label first name, an input with label last name, so on and so forth. And then for each of those, we're taking the data from person and we're setting it to the value first name. And we're inserting last name, a company name, et cetera, phone number, all the way to the end. So for, to, to back up a step, for every row in the workbook, so for every row in the workbook, we're gonna fill and submit the form, and we're searching for each input for first name and setting it to the first name, searching for each input for the last name, setting it to the last name, and so on. And once we've completed that form for this particular row, for this particular person, then we're going to click the submit button again using that XPath. Because that form changes, that's why we chose to go with this XPath approach. If you had a website that was always in the same order, then you could do something perhaps a little bit simpler by using just an ID or maybe an order of the forms on the page. There's lots of different ways to address this within RPA bots. Again, this is just the way that we chose to solve it for this particular challenge because of the way the form moves around on the page. So now that we've clicked submit, we've completed this step, which means we've completed this step. So now we come back up to the top, we've completed fill the forms. Now we need to collect the results. Let's go down to that keyword, collect the results. So we're gonna get text off of the web page. We're gonna again do an XPath search. We're looking for the keyword congratulations and we wanna pull out the message that's contained within there. And we're gonna set that as an output variable. This is a variable that gets returned to your running process. And we can see that in just a moment. But first, before we actually connect it to our BPMN process, you'll notice it says RPA worker not connected down here in desktop modeler. Well, let's fix that. If you go to our documentation uh, right here, you will find that in our getting started guide, one of the first steps that you need to do is download and run the latest version of the RPA worker. Well, I have already done that. I have it here in this directory. I am using a MacBook running Mac OS. Uh, we do support Windows and Linux as well. So please adjust these directions slightly depending on your environment. And uh, let me let me open this, this back up. I don't wanna open my application properties and show you my client ID in secret for, for my Komunda account. So let me open this, this backup that I have just to show you what's in here. So just like any job worker, just like any API client that needs to connect with your running Komunda cluster, whether it's self-managed, uh, locally hosted using C8 Run or Docker, uh, or you're using maybe our SaaS, whatever that is, you need to define how to connect to it. You need to provide your client ID, the address, et cetera. So in the, in the one that I'm not showing, uh, the actual application properties here. Uh, I have these particular variables filled out. I went into my cluster, I created an RPA challenge worker client credentials, and then I added that to this section here. So the RPA worker knows how to connect. And now let's go ahead and run that worker. And once it started, if we switch back to desktop modeler, we will see now that our RPA worker is connected. Now here's my favorite part of this whole setup. Once that RPA worker is running, I can test it locally. I don't need to connect to ZB. I don't need to have a deployed process running. I don't need to deal with all those extra steps to just test this particular bot. I can just click this little test tube icon and click test script and off it goes. We should see the browser open here in just a moment. There it is. Maximize the web page, fill in all of the data. Ta-da! And then when it's done, your success rate is 100%, 70 out of 70 fields in 3,500 milliseconds. Boom, there we go. We know that our script is doing exactly what we want it to do. The next step, I wanna make this executable by Komunda, by ZB, 
inside of a BPMN process. And in order to do that, just like anything else, you have to deploy it. Before I deploy it though, I'm gonna give it an ID. We'll find out why this ID is important in a moment. I'm gonna copy this while I'm here. And I'm gonna go ahead and click deploy. And I already have my credentials set up here. And off it goes, and you'll see that we have a successful deployment. Now, if I switch back over to my browser, let's switch to Modeler. I already started a new project in Modeler and a blank BPMN diagram for us to work with. And we're going to add a quick task here, an end event. We're gonna keep this super, super simple for this video. Nothing fancy here. And you'll notice, sorry, I went a little bit quick through there. You'll notice that I chose, let me just switch this back to a generic task. Type in RPA. We have an RPA connector. This is what actually connects your process to that RPA worker running on a workstation somewhere. We're gonna call this RPA challenge. And let me switch to the implement tab. So we can see that we're missing something. What is that something we're missing? Oh, it's a script ID. Well, guess what that is? That's the ID of the script that we set previously before we deployed it. Of course, you have to be able to correlate this task with some sort of RPA script that's deployed. And the way to do that is with this ID. So I called it RPA challenge. We're gonna put in the ID RPA challenge. We're gonna deploy this to my cluster running 8.7. That is now deployed. And let me go ahead and just run it. And hopefully here in just a moment, we will see, there it goes. That was quick. The browser is already running. So this is, this was not tested locally. This is ZB running in the Komunda SaaS platform that executed an RPA bot running on my laptop using that RPA worker. And that's it. That's the magic. Boom, there we go. We have solved the RPA challenge using Komunda. We solved it just using an RPA bot. We were able to test it, made it work, and now we've integrated that bot into a BPMN process. And of course, we could have additional steps here to solve additional challenges or to send the results to somebody or email it or display it in a form, whatever you need to do. That's the power of BPMN and the power of being able to uh, work with a workflow like that. So there you go. Congratulations, you have solved the RPA challenge using Komunda. Thank you so much for watching.